One of the biggest mistakes that junior React developers make is not using a custom hook when they're using the context API. Let me show you why we want to use a custom hook. Let's say we have some logo component, and if the user has set the theme to dark mode, we want to return the dark mode version of this logo. Otherwise, we want to return the light mode version. So in this component, we need to know the theme. And you can imagine in other components, we also need to know the theme. And we don't want to do all that prop drilling. So instead, we're going to create a context for the theme. The theme is a very typical use case for the context API in React. And the proper way to implement it is like this. So typically you're going to have a separate folder with all your contexts. You can create a context like this, create context. And the initial value that you pass here is actually the value that you will get if you try consuming the context outside the provider component. So we can create a context like here. And then you can use that variable to say dot provider. And then you specify the value that you want to pass to the consumers of this context. Right? So we're going to consume this context in the logo. And we decide here what we are actually passing through. What's going to be an object with theme and set theme. So the actual theme is what we're keeping track of here. Initially, it's going to be light. So now that we've created our context, now we need to wrap the part of our app that needs access to this context. So I'm using Next.js and in Next.js, we have this layout file. This root layout is basically the root component of your whole React component tree. So this is wrapping all the pages. Now with the theme, you want to have this pretty high up in your React component tree because a lot of components need access to it. So we might as well just wrap essentially our whole app with it. So here we can say theme context provider, import it like this and just wrap everything in here. Right? So the children here is going to be the page. So it's going to be home page, about page. Next.js will just substitute the children here essentially for whatever page you're on. So every page now has access to this provider component. When I do this, I get an issue because we are using use state here, which is only possible in client components. So let me quickly convert this to a client component. I will save here. Now the error is gone. A very typical mistake here, by the way, is that people think that now because I made this provider component a client component, some people think that now every Everything here becomes a client component. And that's not true because what we're doing here is just getting the children and just passing through. So this can be a client component and everything in here can stay a server component. Right? So this is the right way of implementing the context API in Next.js. So now every page has access to the context. And let's say we want to use it in logo here. We need to make sure that logo is part of some page in Next.js. So here in the root of the app directory, you also get the page file here. This is for your home page. So let's just add the logo component here to the home page just so we can then consume the context API and let me import this. So I imported this. Now we can consume the context API in this logo. And so first part of context API, provide the value. Now you can consume the value. So we want to consume that context. We can use react use context, the use context hook. Now I don't like to import it like that. I like to import the function separately like this. And then react wants to know which context because you can have many different contexts. Well, we call this context the theme context. And if we want to use it elsewhere in a different file, we need to export that. So then here we can go here and we can say we want to use the theme context and import it like that. I get an error here because I'm using a client side hook. So this also needs to become a client component now. So the first problem with use context here is that we need to carry around this variable here. In every component that we want to use this theme context, we have to carry around this theme context here, import it, specify it manually. That's annoying. The second problem with what we're doing here now, let's say we actually want to use the context. So we have the theme. We have, we're passing through the theme and set theme. So we should be able to use context.theme. But if you do that, you're going to get an issue. Now, typically you actually just destructure it immediately. So we can also just say theme and set theme, right? This is what we want to get from our context. We're consuming our context like this usually, but this doesn't work out of the box. We actually get an issue here because it's saying something about that theme does not exist on type null and the same for set theme. And this is coming from the fact that we have specified null here as the value that you should get if you try to consume the context outside the provider component. So here, if I would add the logo like this, the logo is outside the context provider. And here we have specified that the value for context should then be null, right? So here, when I try to consume the context, well, technically it could be null. This logo component could be an instance where we are actually using it outside the provider component. All right, so let me do this. So here, you cannot just start using theme and set theme. You have to first check that it's not null. So if this context is null, we want to, let's say, throw an error so we can immediately solve it, we can say theme context should be used theme context provider, right? And then we can start using the theme and set theme safely. So problem one with just using the context like this is you have to carry around this variable, which is annoying. Second problem is you have to check for that null value every time before you can use it. So the solution for this is actually a custom hook. So what I do is whenever I create a context in the same file here, I also create a custom hook for consuming the context. Let's call that function use theme 
context. The function name starts with use because I'm going to use a React hook in there. The convention is then that you put the use word in front of the functions so that it's clear that you're using a React hook in there. So then here, we're not going to do this null check like this or carry around the variable like this. We can already do that here in our reusable function here. So here we can simply try to consume that context. And I actually get a great suggestion here from Copilot, so I'll just accept here. I don't want to use it like that. I will just import it like this. Here I'm already using the variable. So then we get our context. We don't want to check for undefined alone. We just want to do it like this. And if it is indeed null, we can say use theme context must be used within a theme context provider. If you try using it outside, like here, an error will be thrown so you can immediately fix that. Otherwise, we can just return the context. So if we save this and now we want to consume it in some component, we can just use that hook. So now we can immediately destructure it and we can just use our custom hook, use theme context. And I need to import this, of course, but I'm not exporting it here. So let me export this and then let me import this. And now we can get rid of this other stuff. So let me remove this. So now you can see we don't have to carry around some annoying variable every time. And we also don't have to check for null value. And it's also immediately clear from this hook name what context we are using. The problems are now abstracted away into a custom hook. Now I'm using TypeScript here and I haven't properly typed everything here because I didn't want to focus on that in this video. But let me quickly do that here just for completeness sake. Let's just follow the red squiggly line. So here I have children. To type component props, I like to separate it out into a separate type. And then I'll just type that at the top of the file. So that will just be an object with children react node. Second red squiggly line here is for value. It's saying something about value is not assignable to type null. So what we're doing here is we're saying the value should be an object with a theme and set theme. But we have specified this null value when we created the context. And TypeScript has inferred from that that this context is going to be some null value. So then when we try to pass an object, Objects, it's telling us, hey, what are you doing? You're trying to assign something that should be a null value. So here, when we create the context, we need to properly specify what this context shape is going to be. Let's just call that type theme context, which we can then specify here. And this context will be an object with theme, let's say string, and then also set theme, which will be a React setter function here. Now, we don't know the type of the top or hat, and I get a great suggestion here from Copilot, which is actually true in this case. But let's say I'm not using Copilot or Copilot gives a different suggestion. You can just hover the set theme TypeScript will tell you what type this is. So let me just accept this. Now we got red squiggly line under null because now we're telling TypeScript this context is going to be of type theme context, which has a theme and set theme. And suddenly we're passing null here. So it's telling us why you're passing null here. This is not in the type that you just specified here. So what we can do here is we can say this is going to be of type theme context or null because it could be null if we try to use it outside that context provider. In that case, it's going to be null. Otherwise, it will be this theme context. Now, we can be a little bit more specific about this theme. It's not going to be of any string. We can be more specific than that. It's going to specifically be only dark or light, so not any string. All right, so then we get the next red squiggly line, which is here. Type string is not assignable to type dark or light. So now the problem is we are trying to use a theme in our value here, and it thinks that theme can be any string. Here we have just specified it's going to be either dark or light but this theme variable here has been typed as string so TypeScript has inferred from this string here that this is going to be of any string right this is a very tricky one so here with use state we can also specify what type it's going to be so we can say that's going to be either dark or light when we do that you can see the red squiggly line here is removed and now we are duplicating ourselves so we could also extract this out into its own type we can just call that type theme and that's just going to be this union type, right? So here we can just specify the theme separately like this, and then we can just use that type here and also here. And as a side note, by the way, this is also one of the reasons why we want to use the type alias and not interface. With interface, you cannot assign a union type like this, right? With interface, you're always describing an object. With type alias, you can describe an object, but then also everything else. So in this case, the union type. All right, so then we have one more rest quickly line here. Let's take a look. And this is coming from here. So here we're basically allowing any string to be passed in when we call the setter function. Well, we can be more specific than that. We can now say you can only pass in something that's of type themes. So either the string dark or the string light. So now when we do this, all of our red squiggly lines are gone and we solve that whole TypeScript issue. We talk a lot about TypeScript in my React and Next.js course as well. In any case, make sure you've mastered the fundamentals, both JavaScript as well as CSS. Check out the links in the description. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye.